Hello everyone, my name is Paul Third, and this week I have a treat for you as I have my very good friend Emra Chelik on the channel. Now for anybody that doesn't know, Emra is an award winning mix and mastering engineer who has over a billion streams, that's right, you heard right, a billion streams uh, online for his mixes and masters and Emra has created his very own plugin called Kickshaper. I've been using it in my mixes but Instead of me farting about <laughs> trying to tell you guys, you know, how I could use it and, you know, why it was made and blah, 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 blah. I thought, you know what, why not just get Emra on the channel? So without further ado, let me introduce you to Emra Chelik. Hey Paul, how are you doing? Pleasure to be here as your guest. Kick Shaper is a kick mixing plugin, which is using different algos and different uh, techniques and tricks to make your kicks sounds amazing on, on everything from mobile phones to the bigger speakers and festival speakers, arrays and everything. It is big, actually based on computer-based kicks, you know, from mostly electronic music genres such as trap, hip-hop, EDM, drum and bass and everything that you really need that, that your kick kicks hit hard. But as far as, as I test it, it is working on acoustic kick as well such as rock and other genres. As long as you feed it with, with a clean acoustic kick, it's going to do magic and it's going to work amazing. I don't feel that industry really needs such a plugin because, you know, when I try to mix a kick, it was like, you know, it's like McDonald's recipe, right? Like you put compressor, you put EQ, you put a limiter, a clipper, and... You know, trying different methods and multibands and everything, just it was just crowded. So with Kick Shaper, it, it literally takes like 30, 40 seconds to, to mix a kick for me at the moment, and which is a big time saver, you know, especially uh, as an engineer that, it, that has to work on, on multiple tracks every day. What does it do better than other plugins is that it used different algos that I created. And, uh, for example, there's a big Deboom knob, which is uh, analyzing the, the length of the wave on the sub-frequencies. Because when speaker hits, right, if there's too much sustain and, and speaker must utilize that sustain for a longer time, the energy, the low frequency energy stays there for longer time and it starts creating distortion. And that buildup on the low frequencies is just over taking the, the freshness of the clarity of the, of, of the song and mixes. The old method was like, you have to fade out the kicks and make them shorter to fit your boomy or big bass line, right? But no need to do it anymore because we have Kick Shaper, the boom module, which is not changing the length of the kick, but reducing the wavelength of the sub frequencies. The classic methods that we that we usually see is that they usually they usually create a subsynth, right? When you measure it, everything there is a kick attack and there is a generated sub subsynth frequency. There is always milliseconds ahead of that kick transient, and the kick never sounded natural and punchy, and it was just making my kicks more more boomy, and and it start disturb my kicks more than before. So that's why in tail. I decided to resonate the filter instead, find most healthy frequency, and then resonate it, which is not going to sustain the sub, but a little bit, you know, over harmonics. And that's why the kicks will never sound boomy, but it still have a longer tail. When kick punch stays, the sustain stays, but in a healthy way, unlike substance. Uh, if you have like rapid kicks, kick fires, or kick fills that repeating itself in a very short time, then if you if you try to add uh, a transient shaper, a classic transient shaper, and try to you know like enhance the attack, it will it will catch the first two kicks and then it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna miss the second or third or fourth, and it's gonna come back. It's gonna be random. All the transient frequencies mostly most of them relies on the higher frequencies and when we feed the transient shaper 
we feed with the entire frequency range, it reads that, that entire low end and upper frequencies at the same time. And there's a difference between higher frequencies and lower frequencies. Higher frequencies, that's why we call it higher frequencies, because they resonate higher compared to low frequencies. And there's a timing problem, right? Then transient shipper cannot understand how to react. It is, it is maybe slow on the low, but fast on the, on the higher frequencies. That's why it creates com confusion for the, for the transient shaper algorithm. But I decided to, let's remove everything from the equation and calculation on the, on the bottom, bottom of the kicks, and then just trigger the transient, transient algorithm with higher frequencies. Now you have a rapid kicks that, that comes right after each other, but like pam, 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 and your transient stays perfectly fine. It's going to catch every single beat. In that situation and that goes with the thumb section as well which is sustain of the kick and it's going to catch the sustain of, of the kick because it's not going to trigger it's not going to be triggered by the higher frequencies but rather low frequencies which is perfect timing i think it's one of the most unique and uh, accurate um, transient shaper you can find on the market and there's also a uh, a special tone that I created that I usually uh, add with pop filter AQ and you know the similar kind of tricks, some kind of pull text style AQ tricks as well, and then it feeds to enhance section where I capture it my LHUA here um, as a default state that I call a default state because I was just feeding it with my kicks without it doing anything, and I just uh, take a convolution out of it. And put it on the plugin, and it it was it was working amazing. So it's just uh, it never touches the stereo stage or mono stage or, or the phase of the kick in a bad way, but it enhanced the kick, sounds more more you know 3D and depth, but it's not actually if you measure it. It's just it's just perfectly mono and mono compatible. It doesn't kill your uh, limiter. You don't see like 10 or 12 dB gain reduction on your limiter, which is fine because kicks are most dominant elements in my workflow. That's why if you can have a great kick mix on your songs, you can push it harder. You can have more dynamic sound. You can, you know, even achieve more loudness. I can now easily go down to minus four, five, minus six LEFS if I want to without even. Uh, worrying about that um, it's going to sound distorted. So I encourage everyone to try it out. There's a 15 days fully functional trial. So, and it's still $16, if I'm not mistaken, $16 on WA production homepage. And there you have it. Thank you very much to Emra for um, coming on the channel and enlightening all of us <laughs> with his vast experience and wisdom um, and mixing and mastering. For anybody that's interested, I will leave a link in the description to KickShaper. Uh, you could demo it, trial it, and um, most importantly, if you do decide to try it out, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Leave your honest feedback because it is good for Emra. He just wants honest feedback on this plugin. So there you have it. My name is Paul Third. I do promise I will, <laughs> I will physically be on the channel next week. But until then, I'll see you next week.